Welcome back to Pokemon Black Walkthrough. I'm your host, Diogen Z. See you later, accordion guy. We are heading out into Pinwheel Forest today. On the last episode, we beat the Nacreen City Gym Leader, Lenora, and Berg. This way leads to Pinwheel Forest. If they manage to scuttle off into the forest, we might be in some trouble. And at the end of our battle with Lenora, Team Plasma came by. By the way, you guys don't have to go back to the Pokemon Center. Just stop at this nurse if you get hurt in Pinwheel Forest. Very nice addition that is pretty much a mainstay throughout this game. But Pokemon... Oh, hold on. Well, you see, there are two ways out of Pinwheel Forest. The road goes straight and the path that winds through the woods. I will take the straight road after them. Yeah, you take the easy way. If they're not there, I'll block the exit. Would you please take care of the other way and check whether Team Plasma is hiding in there somewhere? You'll run into a lot of trainers, but it's basically a single path. So I'm sure you won't get lost. Come on, let's do this for Lenora's sake. How about the sake of archaeology? How about the sake of that Dragon Knight skull, huh? Oh, I already see him. So yeah, Team Plasma came in busting into the museum in the last episode and snatched a Dragonite skull right before our very eyes. Ha! Huh, could you believe it? The cojones on those guys and girls. Which is kind of weird, but hey, transvestite Team Plasma members, I wouldn't be surprised. So now it is our duty in this episode to track them down and try and retrieve the Dragonite skull. I'm very interested to see why they wanted it in the first place. I have no clue what powers it holds. But hey, it's a Pokemon that flies around the world. And it's funny, I really didn't know anything about that, I guess because I don't read the Pokedex entries, but I never knew for the longest time that Dragonite was a Pokemon that did such a thing. Oh really, Team Plasma? You think you can defeat me? Let me guess, you have a Pat Rat. Or a Sandile. Yep, Sandile! Okay, woohoo! This is gonna be a piece of cake for Timber. Team Plasma is great training for any fighting type Pokemon you may have. And especially if you're trying to evolve your Timber like I am, this is a great training area. Also, I highly recommend that you pick up a Pokemon that will learn some fire type moves, because when we get to Castelia City, you're gonna need it for the gym. Berg is the gym leader and he's an insect trainer. So, you're gonna want some fire type moves or flying type. But this Pinwheel Forest is also a great place, other than the Team Plasma members, for fighting and training your fighting Pokémon. It's also good to train flying and fire types. The Pokémon you'll find are as follows. Katoni, if you're playing in black. And if you're playing in white, Petlil. A Seawaddle, P-Dubs, and Venipedes. So you'll mo mainly find them in the regular grass. And in the double grass, you find a Swadloon, Tranquil, and Whirlipede, which are just the next evolution of all those that I said before. And the Petlil and Katoni stay the same. But if you don't have a good fire Pokemon right now, and you're wondering what to use, say you didn't get Pignite, or, uh, sorry, not Pignite, that's the evolution, Tepig, the fire starter, or you didn't get the Fire Monkey, Panseer, like I did, then you might want to catch a Blitzel, and you can find them on Route 3. Reason being is that at level 18, Blitzel will learn Flame Charge, which only does 50 damage, but it has the added effect of raising your Pokémon's speed. So if you want to train your Blitzel in mainly attack, and then just keep Flame Charging and not have to worry about the speed EVs, that's a good way to counteract that and compensate for your lack of speed. You're sabotaging us because something, something, something. Too fast. <laughs> Sorry, I'm empty-handed. Do I look like the kind of girl to carry a heavy load? Wow, that could be taken in so many ways. Oh, by the way. Ah, wild Pokemon. Oh, Seawaddle. You know what? Let's catch this guy because, as I said, I want to read you guys the Pokedex entries. But this little guy, he's basically the Caterpie of this generation. And he offers some good experience points if you have a P-Dove or Flame Pokemon, or a Pokemon with a Fire-type move. Seawaddle was caught! Added to the Pokedex. The Sewing Pokemon. Livani dress it in clothes they made for it when it hatched. It hides its head in its hood while it is sleeping. Oh, it's so cute! 
It is really adorable. And we'll battle you, and then I can finish what I want to say! I patrol Pinwheel Forest every day. This is the perfect battle zone for me. Because I'm a Pokemon Ranger. I thought Pokemon Rangers weren't supposed to... Well, you know what? Never mind. They do have partner Pokemon. I take that back. Yeah, you're not going to be a problem, Herder. Herder? Herdier? I still don't know how to say his name. I don't care. You guys can yell at me in the comments all you want. I will still refuse to say it right. No, I'll try not to be ignorant, but still, I'm just learning all these names super duper fast. Trying to get good walkthroughs out. A ranger always has one of these. I'll give you one. A Chestoberry. A Chestoberry. I don't know if I've mentioned this before. If you attach it to your Pokemon, it will make them wake up if they are put to sleep. But that rock back there, covered in moss, when you take your Eevee there and level it up, that's how you get yourself a Leafeon. Remember in the last episode where I said I would show off... Ugh, Pokemon. How I'd show off the item finder? Well, that was it. That's the dousing machine of this generation. And ugh, so many wild Pokemon! I just want to keep going. But basically, you have those, like, flight... I don't even know what you'd call them. Like, flight patrolling bat batons. That's kind of what it looks like. And they will ding and point towards where there's a hidden item. I think this is the best that the item finder has ever been in any Pokemon game, hands down. You don't have to touch the screen, you don't have to do anything. With the quick menu launch, you could just add it like you saw me there do, and I mentioned it in past episodes, all you have to do is go into your key items and check the box, and then press Y, and that'll activate the quick menu so you can get dousing machine without even having to go into the bag. And then the dousing machine will do all the work. It's fantastic. You just go along in your journey and... Ah! Carmen San Diego, you're back! I missed you from the white walkthrough. How you doing? And I bet I'm still gonna kick your ass. Yep. One Pokemon. I'm gonna burn your broccoli. Yeah, so the item finder is fantastic in this game. You don't have to do a damn thing. You just have to go on your journey. And when you hear ding, just look to the bottom screen and see where it's pointing the best way for the dousing machine to be instituted in this game, in my opinion. Chestoberry! So do all Pokemon Rangers have a Chestoberry? Or are we going to encounter some that have others? I wonder. So if you don't want to get a Blitzel and say you want Panseer but your starter wouldn't allow you to, the monkey's aunt would not give you a Panseer because ENOUGH WITH THE WILD POKEMON! Sheesh, I can't walk two steps without getting into a wild encounter. They definitely upped the wild encounter rate in this game. I, I don't see how they couldn't. <laughs> I just don't have, uh, I don't think that my luck has changed that much since uh, Diamond, Pearl, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Platinum 2. I always leave that one out. But anyway, if you want to get a Fire Monkey yourself, all you have to do is watch for Shaking Grass. And I haven't said anything about Shaking Grass before, but what Shaking Grass is... When you see a little patch of grass, a little square, pixelated square, of rustling patch of grass, there will be a rare Pokemon in there. And usually what you'll find most of the time is an Audino. And that's essentially... I don't know if it's really a Chansey because it's so easy to find, and Chansey was hard as hell to find in any of the other games. But Audino is like Chansey in the way that when you defeat it, it has a lot of experience to give. So some people may want to spam for experience that way if they're having trouble. I personally like having Audinos at my disposal because on my cartridge game, I'm having kind of uh, Team ADD, where I don't know what Pokemon I want to keep on. And I actually put my starter back in the box. My Servine, I was like, you know what? I played with a Servine, and I had a Superior in the white walkthrough. I want to train some other Pokemon. So that's uh, kind of difficult for me because I have Pokemon I trained for the first part of my journey, then I changed my mind seeing cooler Pokemon, and I'm like, I want to train them all! <laughs> so that's, uh, it's good to have Audinos. But in Pinwheel Forest, you can find all of the elemental monkeys. So Panseer, Pansage, and Panpour, they're all here. And you just got to look for the shaking grass. And how you get the Shaking Grass is basically you just run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth outside of a patch of grass, and you wait for the patch to shake. I could do a video pointing this out, but I know Zelgarath from the Pokemon Blogger channel 
he's already done a video about it, so check him out. And uh, he explains it quite well. I could do one if you want, but it's really unnecessary. It's very simple. All you have to do is stand outside the grass and walk back and forth, back and forth. And then Pokemon that are rare will eventually appear. But other than the f elemental monkeys and Audino appearing in Pinwheel Forest, you can catch a really, really rare uh, last evolution starter. Or last evolution st Last evolution Pokemon. But wait. A pursuer? <laughs> a kid like you beat us? That can't be helped. But I'll take you on now. Yeah, you don't even know us. The power we possess. But anyway, a final stage evolution grass Pokemon lies in this forest that's very, very good to get. Very rare, so you may have to keep walking back and forth quite a while. If you're playing black and you see shaking grass, you may encounter a Whimsicott, which is the final evolution of Katoni. And if you are playing in the white version, you may find a Lilligant, which is the final evolution of Petlil. Those are exclusive Pokemon to black and white, respectively. And if you want to get them both, you'll probably have to utilize the GTS, which is so super streamlined now, it's not a problem. And hey, if you think about it, if you just use that grass shaking move that I taught you, just walk back and forth, and then when you see the grass shake, activate a repel so you don't run into any other Pokemon. Because if you do, that'll just cancel out the grass shaking. Got the Dragon Skull back! I love how they don't even say Dragonite, even though we all know it is. So the dream our king had, the dream we had, won't come true. Oh yeah, thanks. How about saying excuse me next time? How are you holding up, fellow subject of our king? Gorm of the se Seven Sages! I'm mortified that this skull, which we went to so much trouble to attain, was stolen from us by a kid. It's not important. We can afford to abandon the Dragon Skull. According to the results of our research, this is not the legendary Pokémon for which Team Plasma is looking. It is completely unrelated. It's from Kanto, and this is Unova. There's no past generation Pokemon here. Well, not until after the postgame, but we'll get there. Hey, it's Berg! Oh, sweet! The bug Pokemon were getting all worked up, so I came here. And what do I spy with my little eye? This important looking guy! Oh, look at you with your riddles. Are you here to help your friends? Oh, shit. Dio Gen Z, Berg! I'm gonna send out my Watchog, and they're gonna rip the faces off! Is this guy the big boss? I am one of the seven sages of Team Plasma. Kedis! Another of the seven sages will liberate Pokemon with words alone. Yeah, words alone and you forcibly taking Pokemon. To me, that's not just words. That's you being a douchebag. But the odds are a little against us now. To you, the bug Pokemon user Berg, and the normal type user Lenora. Know your enemies, know yourself, and you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Hmm, those are some wise words. To secure the Pokemon, or to secure the liberation of Pokemon, even you, gym leaders, we will not tolerate any further obstruction from you. Oh, -ho, I guess your words are going to be failing you soon. Alright, so, Team Plasma, Seven Sages, words alone to liberate Pokemon. Some interesting things, even though we know it's a fallacy. Very interesting. Hmm. Got back the stolen skull. And we did corner them. There's no telling what they might do. Yeah, so, anyway, going back to what I was saying, what you could do with the ground shaking, or um, not ground shaking, but grass shaking, is catch yourself two Whimsicots, if you're playing in black, and then offer one up to the GTS for a Lilligant, and that's a perfectly fair trade, and you'll probably get that recognized within a couple of man minutes. Minutes. You're holding the Dragon Skull that you worked so hard to get back, right? Give it to me! or I'll sick my watchhog on you. Thank you so much. With a kind trainer like you taking care of them, the Pokemon with you must be happy. Here's a token of my gratitude. Please use it carefully. The Moonstone! Yes, and from experience, she's right, use it carefully. If you have a Muna with you, be sure to make sure it learns some good moves. I recommend raising it to at least level 23 so it has a good psychic type move, Zen Headbutt. I evolved my Muna prematurely, and it had no good moves, and in turn I had to let it go as far as being on my team for the white walkthrough. But it was some fun times, the very short times that we had with it. So in the next episode, we'll be crossing 
the epic Sky Arrow Bridge and exploring Castelia City. I will see you then, guys.